Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanza. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 2nd of December. India begins phase 3 trials of homegrown coronavirus vaccine. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan promises of developing Gilgit Baltistan as his party assumes power. And NATO Chief Jen Stoltenberg reiterates call for Afghan ceasefire. And now for all the details. India's daily coronavirus cases continue to stay below the 50,000 mark for the 25th straight day, with 36,604 new infections reported on Wednesday. India now has 9.5 million total infections. Meanwhile, the phase 3 clinical trial of homegrown coronavirus vaccine, Covaxin, began at Vedehi Institute in southern Bengaluru city. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who toured the facilities of three vaccine makers over the weekend, has emphasized the importance of a vaccine to rein in COVID-19. Homegrown coronavirus vaccine Covaxin Phase 3 trial began at Vaidehi Institute of Medical Sciences and Research Centre in India's southern Bengaluru city on Wednesday. The ICMR Indian Council of Medical Research has given permission to the research centre to conduct the third phase of trial of the vaccine developed by Bharat Biotech. Vaidehi Institute is partnering with ClinTrack International Limited for the trials that will administer two doses to volunteers. Uh, yeah, for Karnataka it's a happy day and uh, we feel it's a prestigious uh, occasion uh, because uh, the ICMR has given permission for uh, very prestigious uh, uh, research and development institution uh, Bharat Biotech uh, in association with our Vaidehi Medical College and Research Centre. Uh, so I think they are carrying a clinical trial of at least 1600 to 1800 uh, of people in Karnataka. India currently has the world's second highest number of coronavirus infections behind only the United States with over 9.46 million cases and 138,122 deaths. The central government on Tuesday said its priority will be to first vaccinate a critical mass of the population and break the chain of transmission of the virus, indicating that entire population may not be mandatorily vaccinated. Meanwhile, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who had visited three primary companies in different stages of vaccine trials, will hold a virtual all-party meeting on Friday to discuss the COVID-19 situation in the country. Protests against three new farm laws intensified further across India on Wednesday as opposition political parties also joined in support of the farmers. A meeting between Indian ministers and representatives of thousands of protesting farmers failed to break a deadlock on Tuesday. Another round of talks is scheduled to be held on Thursday. Protests against three recently passed contentious farm laws intensified further across India on Wednesday, a day after a meeting between Indian ministers and representatives of thousands of protesting farmers failed to break a deadlock. Farmers from India's northern farming states including Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh have camped outside Indian capital New Delhi for nearly a week, blocking highways, demonstrating against the laws which they fear could pave the way for the government to stop buying grain at minimum support price, leaving them at the mercy of private buyers. In Tuesday's meeting, ministers offered to form an expert committee to look into the grievances of the farmers. But farm leaders suggested another round of talks which will be held on Thursday. Meanwhile, opposition political parties have also stepped up protests in support of farmers, criticizing the government for its handling of the protests. Police also used water cannons on Wednesday as Punjab Youth Congress workers jumped barricades, trying to march to Haryana Chief Minister's residence in Chandigarh city, protesting over the new farm laws. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has defended the laws as historic agricultural reforms and dismissed the concerns raised by farmers. 
while blaming the opposition parties for misleading them. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan has directed authorities concerned to take stern action against opposition leaders if they hold upcoming rallies and violate coronavirus-related preventive guidelines. Khan had earlier blamed the opposition for not caring for the lives and safety of the people amid a rise in cases in the second wave of the pandemic. Pakistan has reported a sharp jump in daily new COVID-19 cases in recent days, taking total tally to 400,482 after the National Command and Operations Center and COC reported 2,458 new cases on Wednesday. The federal cabinet, chaired by Prime Minister Imran Khan on Tuesday, approved allocating 150 million US dollars to procure coronavirus vaccine and reducing the cost of injections needed to treat the virus. Rebuking the Punjab provincial government for not properly handling Pakistan Democratic Movement public meetings, Khan directed authorities concerned to take stern action against opposition leaders including the lodging of FIRs if they hold a public meeting in Lahore on December 13 and violate coronavirus-related preventive guidelines. Khan has blamed the opposition for not caring for the lives and safety of the people amid pandemic. Now, the second layer of IA, I understand that this will be very strong. And in the whole world, the cases are growing. So, I understand that the Sindh government should be able to do our own work. And we should do this like this. के लॉकडाउन भी रहे, सोशल डिस्ट्रेशन भी हो जाए, सामाजिक फासले भी रहे और एसओपीस पे अमल दरामत कराया जाए, एसओपीस पे अमल दरामत तब हो सकता है कि रियासत अपनी जिम्मेदारी निभाए। Despite ban on gathering, the opposition alliance are holding a series of anti-government protest rallies across the country that it plans will culminate in the march on capital Islamabad in January to call for Khan's resignation. Moving on, at a time when opposition parties are blaming irregularities in recently held assembly polls in Gilgit, Baltistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday attended the oath-taking ceremony of the newly elected cabinet in the illegally occupied region. Khan expressed faith in the new government and said he hopes it will change the lives of the locals by developing the region. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday attended the oath-taking ceremony of the newly elected cabinet in the illegally occupied region of Kilgit, Baltistan, amid claims of rigged polling from the opposition. While delivering an address on the occasion, Khan expressed hope that the new government will change the lives of the locals by developing the region and generating more business opportunities for them. Imran Khan led Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf or PTI leader Khalid Khurshid Khan has been elected as the new Chief Minister of Gilgit Baltistan. Khas Tor Pe Chief Minister Sahib Aapko Mubarak Bhi Deta Hoon Aur Main Yeh Aap Se Umeed Lagata Hoon Ke Inshallah Yeh Woh Muntakhib Hukumat Gilgit Baltistan Mein Aai Ghi Jho Ke एक नई ट्रेडिशन पैदा करेगी, एक हुकूमत एक ऐसी आएगी जो एक ऐसा गवर्नेंस का सिस्टम देगी कि हमेशा के लिए आप नई स्टैंडर्ड्स कायम कर देंगे। Activists have blamed Imran Khan government's all-weather friend China has been lobbying it to gain complete political control over the illegally occupied region for its strategic and ambitious China-Pakistan economic corridor. Imran Khan, during an earlier visit to Gilgit Baltistan, just before the November 15 election, had announced to grant provisional provincial status to the region, a move against UN resolutions. NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg has reiterated call for a ceasefire between Afghan government and the Taliban. Speaking after the first session of NATO Foreign Ministers meeting on Tuesday, Stoltenberg urged Taliban to reduce violence in Afghanistan as a first step and said the alliance hopes to see a lasting peace agreement soon. Mm -hmm. 
NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg on Tuesday called on the Taliban to reduce violence in Afghanistan as a first step and said what the alliance needs to see is a lasting peace agreement and part of that has to be a ceasefire. Speaking after the first session of the NATO foreign ministers meeting, Stoltenberg also said that all the NATO allies including the US are committed to continuing support for the Afghan security forces in the form of training and assistance. So the reduction of violence should only be the first step. Uh, the ambition is a uh, uh, inter-Afghan uh, peace uh, uh, solution uh, and of course that has to include uh, uh, a comprehensive ceasefire. Toltenberg said while United States has decided to further reduce its troop numbers to 2,500, the NATO will make a decision in 2021 whether to pull out the troops, depending on the progress of peace talks between the Taliban and the Afghan government. In news from Nepal, as rift within Nepal Communist Party continues, Secretariat members of the ruling party have started discussions on political papers submitted earlier this month by both its chairs, Pushpa Kamal Dahal and Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli. Both NCB chairs in their separate papers had exchanged allegations and blamed on each other which according to them is affecting the working of the party. Secretariat members of the ruling Nepal Communist Party or NCP started discussions on political papers submitted by both its chairs, Pushpa Kamal Dahal and Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli from Tuesday, which is expected to continue for some days now. Both NCP chairs earlier this month had tabled two separate political papers in which they exchanged allegations and blames on each other. Another meeting in this regard has been called on Wednesday, informed Narayan Kaji Shreshtha, the spokesperson for NCP. This comes at a time when NCP is plagued by intra-party rift, primarily due to rivalry between two factions, one led by Oli and the other led by Dehel. Oli has accused Dehel of harboring factionalism within the party, while Dehel has blamed Oli for being autocratic. Executive Chairperson Dahel has also raised a series of questions on the incumbent government's performance, asking indirectly only to step down from the post. Moving on, the annual twin events of Konark Festival and the International Sand Art Festival kick-started in India's eastern Odisha state over the weekend. The Festival of Konark is showcasing the best of India's traditional and classical dance forms, besides offering interesting insights into the rich cultural heritage of the country. While the Sand Art Festival is all about carving sand sculptures on themes like coronavirus and climate change this year. The International Sand Art Festival showcasing sculptures made by artists from across the country began in India's eastern Konak town amid coronavirus pandemic over the past weekend. The well-carved sand sculptures on themes like coronavirus, climate change, made by artists, drew visitors to the festival. However, due to the pandemic, international artists were not able to make it to the festival this year. Due to COVID, this time, everyone knows that the entire world is going on. But I will give the thanks to the Odisha Tourism. So, they didn't stop this festival. And they didn't continue to continue. But uh, anyhow, there was a little change in which foreign artists came from other countries due to COVID. Due to COVID they didn't come from. Meanwhile, the Konak Festival, another annual event, gave the audience a chance to experience the rich culture and tradition of India, particularly Odisha, through colorful dance performances in the backdrop of the Konak Temple. Leading exponents in dance enthusiasts of almost all classical dance forms of India, including Odissi, Bharatnatyam, Manipuri, Kuchipuri and Kathak, is expected to take part in the five-day classical dance carnival. This year, the celebrations during the annual twin events have been affected as less number of audience are willing to visit amid the coronavirus pandemic. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.